Good morning, boys and girls. As we come to hear the Bible story for this week, I want you, first of all, to imagine that you're in the car with your parents and you're driving along and everything's wonderful. And then they come to traffic lights. And if the traffic lights are red, of course, they will stop. If they are green, they will just go through. But have you ever watched them when they're coming up to them and they turn from green to amber and they all of a sudden speed up so that they can get through the traffic lights before they turn red and they don't have to stop and wait for them to turn green again. Because maybe they're in a hurry, maybe they're too busy, that they, they can't wait and maybe they just want to get on with whatever they want to do because they just don't have time to stop and wait at the traffic lights. And you know, boys and girls, that has something to teach us about prayer. Because sometimes prayer is like the red traffic light. When God just simply says, whatever we're praying for, whatever we want, uh, whatever we desire, and God simply says, no, you're not having it. And we know that in our heart of hearts. And we know God is saying no. But sometimes God is like the green traffic light and he answers the prayer right away. And that's just wonderful. And we're so happy and so thankful. But you know, sometimes, quite often, prayer is like the amber traffic light. And we have to wait and wait for God to either say yes or to say no. And you know, that can be a very hard place to be. And the person in my story today, it was she was having to wait on God to answer her prayer. And it was a prayer for something she wanted so badly and desired more than anything else in her life. And that was to have her own child. Because she was married to a man called Elkaya. And she had no sons and no daughters. And this was very upsetting to her. But what was even worse was he was married to another woman called Panana. And Panana had lots of sons and daughters. And poor Hannah had none. But every year they would go to a place called Shiloh. And when they went to Shiloh, that was where they went to worship God. And they would go there and Panana would go with all her sons and daughters and Hannah and Elkiah. And the day came for Hakiah to go and to, to sacrifice to God and to worship him. And when he came back, he brought portions of meat for all of his family. And he gave a portion to Panana and a portion to all her sons and daughters. And when he came to Hannah, he gave Hannah a double portion because he loved her so much. And when Panana saw this, she knew how much Hilkiah loved Hannah more than her and this really 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 annoyed her and she was very jealous of Hannah and she wanted to hurt ha Hannah as much as she could so she would taunt Hannah she would make fun of her she would rub it in to her that she had no children whereas she had so many sons and daughters and this just made Hannah feel much much worse so much so that Hannah would weep and Hannah would go off her food and she would just be distraught. And Alcanah really loved her. And he says to Hannah, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you so downhearted? I mean more to you than ten sons. I love you so much. You mean more to me than ten sons. I just love you. And Hannah, it just, it, it, she was just so upset. That when they had finished eating, she went up to the place where they worshipped. And there she started to pour out her soul before God. And she prayed from her heart. And as she prayed, she made a vow to God, which is making a promise to God. And this is what she said. She said, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. And what she was really saying was, Lord, give me this son, but I will give it back to you and I will allow him to be set apart from the very day he's born that he will serve you all the days of his life and his hair will not be cut because people knew that people whose hair was not cut, it was a sign that they were set apart to serve God and as she was praying Eli the, the priest was sitting at his doorpost and he noticed Hannah and he saw that she was talking but no words were coming out of her mouth 
because she was praying with him and she was crying out to God. And as he looked at her, he thought, this woman must be drunk. She must have drunk too much. And he said to her, how long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. And Hannah says, no, no, not so, my Lord. I am a woman so deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. And Eli says to her, look, go in peace. And may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked him. And Hannah says to him, may your servant find favour in your eyes. And you know, she went up from that place. She wasn't downcast anymore. And she left because she had a peace in her heart. And she knew that God was going to answer her prayer. And early the next morning they arose, they went back home. And within the year, God truly answered her prayer and gave Hannah a son. And she called the son Samuel because she says, I asked the Lord for him. And the year, the next year came round and Helkiah and Panana and all her sons and daughters got ready to go back to Shiloh to worship God. But Hannah says, look, I'm not going. I'm going to stay here till the child is weaned. And when the child is weaned, I will take him up to the temple and I will leave him there to serve God. And that's where he will live for the rest of his life. So Achaia said to Hannah, do whatever you feel is right. So he went with all his family up until Hannah, the year came when Hannah thought the child is weaned enough. And she says, yes, I will go with you up to the temple. And they took with them, they took with them a bull and they took with them a small amount of flour and a skin of wine and they brought them up to the house of the Lord. And when the bull had been sacrificed, they brought the boy to Eli. And Hannah says to him, pardon me, my Lord, as surely as you live, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child and the Lord granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord for his whole life, that he will be given to the Lord. And Hannah at that time, at that moment, handed him over to Eli to live there, that he may be brought up to serve and to follow God and to be a servant of the Lord. And you, this was a very, very hard thing for Hannah to do. But she had made that promise to God and she knew it was the right thing to do. And even though it was very hard, there was joy in Hannah's heart because she knew it was the right thing. And she rejoiced with the Lord at hearing and answering her prayer. And she made an amazing prayer, which you can read in 1 Samuel 2, unto God about how he cares for the humble and lowly in heart and how he answers their prayers. But you know, Hannah's story doesn't end there. She continued to live with Eli and Panana with all her sons and daughters and God continued to bless her and he gave her he gave her more children he gave her three sons and two daughters but Hannah never forgot about Samuel and every year when they went up to make their annual sacrifice she would take him a little robe which was getting bigger and bigger every year as he grew and she would give that to him and she would see how he was growing up and how he was growing up to come to know and to love the Lord and to serve him. And you know, that is a really good story. And next week, you'll hear just how God worked in Samuel's life from a very young age. But boys and girls, what I want you to remember from Hannah's um, story is that she didn't stop praying and she didn't give up. Even when God made her wait and wait a very long time for something she wanted so much she was ready to wait but when the time was right God answered the prayer and you know boys and girls that's a very important lesson sometimes we look at the things and we think this is what we need this is what we want and we need God to answer the prayer right now but God always knows best because God knows what we need 
and not just for now but for eternity and God knows what we need not just for our physical life but for our spiritual life and sometimes God needs to help us to learn lessons and help us to learn things from him that we can only learn when we wait in prayer so the thing that we have to do is simply trust God whether when we're praying for something whether he's saying yes or whether he's saying no or whether which is so often the case he's saying wait but you know boys and girls what I have learned in my life that if we wait in the Lord and if we pray for something and if we trust him that it's always worth the wait that when God answers our prayer in his time when the time is right everything falls into place and we can be truly thankful because it's not just God giving us whatever we want but it's God meeting our needs it's God teaching us lessons and it's God showing us the way that we can live for him day after day so boys and girls next time you're coming up to the traffic lights think about that and think about well if God's telling me to wait it's for a good reason so let's end this time with a prayer to God and to say thanks to him heavenly father I thank you for the great God you are I thank you that you are a God who answered Hannah's prayer in an amazing way and you're the same God who answers our prayers today in amazing ways help us to be those who are willing to wait even when it's very difficult for your yes or your no and trust you that you always know what is best for our lives both physically and spiritually lord be with us each day and bless us in the week to come for i ask it in jesus name amen <music>